Hi everyone, Nick Russo here, and welcome back to the BGP multi-homing series. Suppose that AS65000 wants to always prefer R4 over R5 for egress towards R6, assuming the link is up. If the R4 connection fails, then R5 should use a pre-installed fast backup path. The AS65000 core routers must learn and install both routes in their ribs and fibs, yet R5 should be marked as a backup only. We'll continue to rely on our iBGP full mesh today because it illustrates a tricky aspect of BGP route advertisement rules that is frequently overlooked. As I've said before, we aren't focusing on ingress routing to AS65000, but I want to describe it briefly. R1 will advertise 2001 colon DB8 colon colon 1 128 into AS65000 from the left side of the diagram, and R2 will advertise it to the other PEs. By setting a multi-exit discriminator or MED of 5 outbound on R5, R6 will prefer R4, which has no MED, when reaching this destination. Since R4 is supposed to be the primary link, this just creates routing symmetry for traffic flowing from right to left, but again, this isn't our focus area. In terms of egress routing, we'll target the 2001 colon DB8 colon colon 6 slash 128 prefix, advertised by R6 into AS65000. To centralize all BGP policy changes on a single device, we'll apply a local preference of 50 inbound from R6. This is less than the default of 100, which is set by R4, ensuring that all AS65000 routers prefer R4 for egress towards this destination. BGP can only advertise its best path, and if R5 prefers IBGP over eBGP, which is true in this case due to local preference, it cannot advertise its eBGP route. We'll need to configure R5 to advertise its best external path to accommodate this, then tell the other AS65000 devices to install R5's backup path. Before we jump into the demo, you should know about my Cisco Advanced Routing courses at Pluralsight. Rather than teach various topics in isolation, I developed unique, large-scale topologies to illustrate how the technologies interact. If you need to brush up on your routing protocols, tunneling techniques, or management services, click the link in the video description to get started. Now, on to the demo. Starting on R5, I've displayed a pair of route maps used to manipulate the BGP best path selection algorithm. Outbound towards R6 will set a MED of 5 so that R6 prefers R4 over R5. This influences ingress traffic towards AS65000. Inbound from R6, we'll set a local preference of 50 so that AS65000 prefers R4 over R5. This influences egress out of AS65000, and when combined with MED, creates a symmetric routing flow with R4 as primary and R5 as backup. Next, let's review the BGP configuration with a focus on IPv6. The IPv6 configuration is nearly identical to the IPv4 configuration, so we'll focus on IPv6. The two route maps are applied in the proper directions on the eBGP peering to R6. I've also enabled BGP Advertise Best External, which allows R5 to bend the BGP rules by advertising its best eBGP learned route, even if that route isn't the best path. The no BGP recursion host command is automatically enabled as well, which instructs the router not to look for alternate BGP next hops when a best path is lost. Instead, the router should rapidly fail over to the backup path. Let's examine the IPv6 BGP table to learn more. From the perspective of R5, there are two paths to R6's IPv6 loopback. The iBGP path via R4 is the best path, as indicated by the greater than sign. The eBGP path via R6 is marked with a lowercase b and x. Together, these flags indicate a best external backup path. Let's drill deeper into this prefix to review all the attributes. The reason iBGP is preferred over eBGP is due to local preference. By setting this to 50 inbound on R5, the default value of 100 from R4 is greater, 
so every router in AS65000 prefers R4 to reach this destination. R5's eBGP route is therefore the best external route available and serves as a backup path. R5 will advertise this to its iBGP neighbors so that they can install it as such. Let's head to R3 to examine how the other routers handle this route. I've displayed the end of the BGP configuration on R3, and there are two commands necessary to process the backup path. First, you must tell the router how to select backup paths. Do you want to choose an arbitrary number of next best paths, all paths, or a single backup path? We'll choose the last option since the others don't make sense in this context. Then, after having selected our backup path, we instruct BGP to install it as such. Let's check the IPv6 BGP table for R6's loopback prefix to confirm it. Similar to R5, R3 sees both paths. R4 is the best path because it has the higher local preference, yet R5 was still able to advertise its best eBGP path. R3 installs this as a fast backup path as indicated by the backup repair message. We can further confirm this by checking the IPv6 rib for this prefix. We see two routing entries just like we did for our multipath testing, but the path via R5 is marked as a repair path. It will only be used for backup if the primary path fails. Let's check the IPv6 fib to further validate this operation, and I'll use the detail keyword to reveal repair paths. Again, we see the primary path via R4 and the backup path via R5. Next, let's omit the detail keyword and only examine the actively used fib entries. This time, we only see R4 as the next hop, confirming that 100% of traffic flows through the primary device. As a final check to ensure routing symmetry, let's head to R6. Checking the IPv6 BGP entry for R1's loopback prefix, we see the med value of 5 has influenced BGP best path. R4 is now the best path, and keep in mind that R6 still has multipath enabled. However, because the meds are no longer equal, multipath cannot be used, and R6 strictly prefers R4 over R5. You could optionally enable BGP backup selection and installation on R6 for these eBGP paths as well, but I omitted that configuration for brevity.